Give me the long ones with the small fonts. That's right. They give you the long questions with the small fonts. And because I don't speak French, you get the French ones, huh? Go ahead, Doc. Uh, hello, I've come across one of your Ask the Doc videos and hope you're still the right person to turn to. Well, I hope so, too. The series is extremely helpful, and I'm very grateful for what you're doing. Well, thank you very much. We're grateful to be in a position to be helping. A little over two years ago, I fell from the top position of a muscle-up where I was holding myself on a straight bar after it had suddenly slipped. Most of my weight fell onto the back of my wrists. Since then, I have gone to countless hours of physio and ergotherapy, ultrasound therapy, and countless doctors. There's disagreement whether it is an SL fracture, uh, lunate. Uh, anyway, uh, as, the, as the latest opinion, which I got yesterday is that it's mostly wrist instability. Well, that would, yeah, that would, that sounds correct. Or that would lead to the other. Uh, the doctor shifted my wrist and it caused extreme pain for the rest of the day. He is, <laughs> not, <laughs> sorry, there's a joke in there, but I won't waste our time. He is a second hand specialist to say the only thing that can help is prolonged rehabilitation. I asked him about the use of anabolics, but he didn't think them as useful, although he did admit that muscular stability and support are the answer, which makes no sense to me. It seems that all the doctors I talk to are scared of admitting the effectiveness of these compounds. Well, this is a long question, so let me just interject here so I don't get lost mm -hmm. like I can uh, often do. Um, you well, you don't necessarily have to have anabolics to build strength up, guys. I mean, it definitely can be helpful to build some muscle. It's anabolic. And as long as you connect the nervous system to those muscles, you can get stronger. And yeah, the two tend to go hand in hand, especially when you're short on muscle. I get it. But remember, there's a lot. there are a lot of strength athletes that are trying to certainly whittle down as much excess tissue as possible, meaning fat, but uh, can also get rid of some excess muscle tissue to get as strong as they can be for their weight class. Remember, bodybuilders, and I'm, I don't mean to generalize too much, but just stay with me here. Uh, you know, they're just looking for hypertrophy. So you might build, uh, if this is direction of the resistance, you might be building uh, muscle cells that, um, or I guess that's not the best way to put it since we're limited uh, to a large degree in the number of cells we have. But you may be developing cells, let's say, in such a way that they're they're working in this angle, okay? Not the most efficient way to do things, right? If you're trying to be pound for pound the best you can be, you want to work those muscles in you know d directly within um, uh, they call it the resistance angle, okay? So um, my point is, you know, we don't always need to turn to anabolics to build strength. Uh, it certainly helps to have some muscle in place, but you want more connections from the brain to the muscle, you know, motor units in play. And that's from, you know, repetition. Uh, there are very few shortcuts there. And, you know, when you're performing the repetitions to be all there, so to speak, to be as ramped up as to be connected to that whole activity as possible. So um, I don't necessarily see, and I'm not trying to, to start something here, but I just, you know, there may be uh, a reason and you can still trust your doctor for him saying, well, you don't necessarily need anabolics, but you do need to develop strength in there. Follow right. what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Um, I'm not saying they might not be helpful, but I'm just, um, maybe I'm defending the doctor a little bit, yeah. but for, you know, for, for good reason. Yeah. Um, I have complete mobility in both wrists, yet I experience pain randomly throughout the day. Sometimes unprovoked, other times when trying to use my wrist, whether it is pushing myself up not exclusively push-ups, but also just leaning against the table, for example, or even very light weights. I have been weight training for about 10 years now, as well as doing martial arts. Not being able to train uh, either discipline or most sports is taking a toll on my mental health. Well, I can definitely relate to that. So let's see if we can help you. Always held being natty at a high regard and have quite high test at 800 nanograms per deciliter and am not looking to tamper with that per se. I am aware that most anabolic steroids will increase my healing rate, uh, your muscle healing, yes. Ideally, I would like to use something which would, would not interfere 
with my natural testosterone production, but I have reached a point where I simply don't care what the consequences are. I need to get back to lifting weights. My initial thought was using any of the following compounds. BPC-157, TB-500, human growth hormone, uh, Anivar slash DECA. The problem arises as BPC and TB are a harder so source than simply tesinanthate. Uh, growth hormone is also hard to source and is normally very expensive. I would need to take an x-ray to check my growth plates have closed as I am 22. Anivar Deca seemed to be less effective than simply doing tests in anthate, and that would require PCT anyways. Okay, I gotta stop there because we were, there's more to it, but let me let me back up. So, first of all, if it's truly uh, an SL fracture that's causing this, well, it's very normal to have the instability there with those kind of fractures. At 22 even, you can you can start to begin uh, to build arthritis because all you're doing, once the cartilage has been broken off there or damaged in any way, you know, one of the reasons why we heal fractures so easily is because bone is, is, is designed, if you will, to grow toward other bone. So you break an arm and it grows together, you know, six weeks, you're in good stead, right? Well, when you lose those caps of cartilage on the end of your bones, and each one of you with the, the, the scaphalunate junction, they've got cartilage keeping all those little pieces of bone from growing together. Well, you injure it, you, you rip off the cartilage, and they're gonna start growing together. And you can have arthritis at, yeah, age 22. I had it since I'm 18. Wow. Um, I don't see any, I don't see him talking about any imaging. I mean, the first thing, you know, yeah, checking the x-ray not just for growth, growth plates, but to see what kind of damage was caused there. Was there a fracture? Uh, more importantly, it might be to get an MRI to see the soft tissue, see if there's any cartilage damage there, because that would help, you know, hone your efforts, you know, chasing this down so you're not going this direction, that direction, whatever. You know what you're working with. Maybe it's not because of a, an SL fracture or any damage in there. Maybe it's something else. Maybe there's ligaments that you can trace, you know, through an MRI and see, oh my goodness, look at all the inflammation there. Let's work on that. That said, BPC-157 is now legal in the United States. Not FDA approved, I don't believe. Uh, it might be. TB-500, thymosin uh, beta-1, again, don't think it's FDA approved, but I believe it's still legal here. Is it peptides? These are peptides, I'm sorry, yeah. And... Um, they could be very useful. You know, the, the TB500 for the, again, if it's must to help with the muscle, you know, that's gonna help with uh, actin and myosin, right? And um, the BPC157, we're not really sure of the MOA of that, but we know it does help um, uh, to regrow tissue. It's an, it's, an artif it's an artificial peptide. It's not naturally occurring in that state it's in, which is a lot of these peptides, you know, the fragments or things that act kind of like the, the things in mother nature. Uh, both those would be good. Um, uh, I would think in his case, if it is, you know, injured cartilage, I think the BPC-157 would be the best because that's, that's great for bone and cartilage healing. Uh, a lot of good science behind that and uh, maybe more importantly, a lot of good clinical results using BPC-157. Uh, so, you know, whatever the diagnosis is, which I don't want to blow past there because that's pretty important. Mm -hmm. One of my big pet peeves is you know, having a treatment without a diagnosis, it happens a lot in medicine, you see it. Don't wanna make assumptions. Now, if there's something you can take which you know will be beneficial no matter what, for example, you know, more specifically, I don't see a drawback to taking BPC-157. Mm -hmm. uh, then, okay, you're not losing by it, but let's, let's get a diagnosis. So, I, I would do some imaging and, uh, you know, BPC-157, TB-500 sound like good options. Human growth hormone, um, that opens up a whole other can of worms. I think we talked about it before. Exogenous growth hormone, first of all, you're not gonna get it legally. We've talked, it's the only FDA approved drug that's not approved for off-label use, period, end of story. This is not Prater, Will I, HIV, this is a fracture. So, you know, uh, it, that one's off the table unless you're gonna do it underground. And, and then, you know, at, at your age, uh, I'm, I would argue that you'd be better off at age 22 using a secretagogue, another peptide, or a peptide omedic like MK677, right. also known as ibutamorin, yeah. to get your body to, to go to super, even supra-physiologic levels. Theoretically, you're not supposed to produce that when you're using something which is promoting your endogenous production, but I've seen it. I've seen uh, an IGF of 464 
in practice with ibutamorin. So, you know, I think that'd be much safer because you're not blocking your own production, you're actually ramping it up. And much cheaper. <laughs> and at least a tenth the, the yeah. you know, or less than a tenth the price. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and growth hormone again, might work if we're assuming that this is part of the diagnosis to help with the bone growth. Um, Anabar and Deca, we just talked about this, not necessarily the, the key. Uh, could it help with muscle growth? Of course it can. But at 22, I, you know, again, and, he, and it sounds like he's making reference, correct me if I'm wrong, to maybe not wanting to mess with a, a good level of uh, total testosterone yeah, growth, right? Yeah, he's so, natural, so yeah. Why, why mess with it, uh, especially at age 22 when you know, I think still, if you want to go by the book, I wouldn't mess with the levels until, you know, except in some extreme circumstance, until you're 26. In other words, at the time at which we believe there's no more, uh, now we're calling it soft wiring, but we used to call it hard wiring of the HPA access. So, you, you know, you're not messing with your, your formation of that HPA access, um, you know, at that point, but at 22, you might be. Uh, lastly, he says, um, the problem arises as... Uh, yeah, BPC and TB are harder to source than simple tests. Uh, HGH is also hard to source and normally very expensive. Yeah, um, I would need to take it. Oh, we read this already. You need to take yeah. an X-ray. Yeah, let's do it. Um, as you can guess, I'm quite confused on how best to go about this. I'd rather not mess with my body too much, yeah. but I'm aware this is probably the only way forward if I ever want to be able to make uh, ever to clean deadlift overhead press, muscle up again. Thank you so much and hope to hear from you soon. So, you know, you got some decisions to make here and I'm, I'm, I'm with you, I mean, at 22, the thing is if you did some damage there, um, you're gonna need to be patient because it's gonna require some time to heal. Soft tissue oftentimes takes a lot longer to heal than just, you know, you sometimes wish, I just wish it was a broken arm because that's six weeks and I'm back in the saddle versus a strained muscle or a sprained ligament even worse where you can be out for six months or more with a nagging injury right um but you know you're 22 be smart you know don't do anything that's going to put you further back um uh, again definitely be patient but get get a proper diagnosis see what's going on with wrists and ankles particularly you got all these little bones moving around there you definitely want to tread lightly and or carefully and, and uh, knowing what you're doing, because once you mess that up, uh, especially when you introduce surgery, boy, it gets really, really difficult. It's not easy. It's just, oh, yeah, we'll put that, uh, you know, uh, radius back together with a cast and it'll heal up real quick. No, these, this is much more uh, complicated territory. So be smart about it. Um, I don't mean to sound like I'm... No, it's good advice. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would just be, be smart and be careful. That's why they're asking, because yeah. <laughs> they want to know. All right, thanks, Doc. Sure.